as many of you know, I recently announced that my cookbook is on pre-order. In three hours, it went number one across the globe, including the US and Canada. So that's pretty cool, but you wanna know what's a whole lot cooler, brother? Pre-ordering my book. Now get on over to the link in the description and pre-order that book. Chick-fil-A, Popeyes, we've been through the chicken sandwich world and we haven't lost yet. And we're definitely not going to lose to KFC. Okay, so today we're making the KFC chicken sandwich. What does that mean? What's the difference between this chicken sandwich and any other chicken sandwich we've made on the channel before, right Josh? You're gonna just do the same bun, same front? No, okay, it's about technique, it's about spices chosen, and it's little changes that we make to the dough that make it what it should be. We're gonna be making everything from scratch, of course the buns, of course the chicken, and our own beautiful MSG garlic aioli, and if that doesn't get your gears grinding and rolling, I don't know what the heck will, so with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Wow, it's the taco kernel, the local kernel. KFC backslash Taco Bell. This guy's serenading someone. Hey yo, he's serenading his lover. Can we just bring back love? Two classic uh, KFC chicken sandwiches. The guy in front of us ordered his food and he, I guess he got tired of waiting. So he's like, that's it, I'm get, I'm going home. Clar Clarissa, shut the fuck up. And then he just drove off. So I'm wondering if we're gonna get his order too. Thank you. We're good, all right. So we're gonna go eat it, I guess. Okay, so we've got uh, I like this design a lot better, just compared to all the other ones that we've seen throughout the days and weeks and months and year. Year? The one with McDonald's trying to be artsy fartsy. Look and learn, bud. Yeah, that's a little weird though. I don't want to look at that. Why is he looking at me like that? <laughs> I have one thing to say before I even eat this. This is the best looking chicken sandwich we have had on Bud Better. So far. Easily. This actually looks like the photo. Good amount of pickles. I thought there was mayo. Did you forget something? Pickles all in the center. I thought the pickles were on the bottom though. Excuse me, sir. That's the top. I'm not saying that that makes the sandwich worse, but I do say that that's false advertising. Oh my God, that is dry. Flavor-wise, not bad. Salt levels are perfect, I will say that. KFC always nails salt, and that's a big one for me. But the other thing that they nail is leaving the chicken in the fryer so long that you can texturally tell each and every fiber from top to bottom. I'm running out of breath because I'm using the majority of my energy to moisturize my mouth from how dry the chicken is. Uh, buns are good, I actually like them. One of the better buns, I like it. They say it's brioche, it's not. Just as a heads up. Can we do better than this? Salt level, seasoning level, yes. Texturally, definitely. So less. All right, we all know my buns at this point, so I'm not gonna put you through that process again. So if you want the recipe, or you still haven't seen it somehow, I don't know how that's possible, the link is in the description. All you need to know is that I tweaked it slightly, I added a little extra water and an extra like two tablespoons of sugar to give it some sweetness to the dough. Kind of like how mass manufactured breads have extra sugar in them because they have lower quality ingredients and they need actual flavor, so they do that. But you see, we already have flavor, so that plus sugar is more flavor. Anyway, once your buns are shaped, brushed with egg wash, baked until beautifully browned, and finally brushed with butter, we can then jump into making our sandwich components. But first, let's marinate our gook. It's French for chicken and sounds funny. In a large bowl, add one tablespoon of smoked paprika, one and a half teaspoons of MSG. Yes, KFC uses it. One tablespoon of kosher salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of ground white pepper. Give it a little whisk, and then whisk in two cups of buttermilk. Once all that's combined, you have your chicken's little bag. <gasps> then to that, you'll add two pounds of chicken thighs. Now look, you can use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. It's definitely the easiest route, and it's still delicious. But if you really want your chicken to have that juicy, juicy squirt squirt, I would recommend getting the bone in and skin on chicken thighs, removing the bone yourself. And yes, oh, it's a little extra work, but all you need is a sharp knife running down the fat line that runs over the bone of the thigh. Whittle your knife under there, scrape the meat off the bone, and it should come right out. It's genuinely one of the most self-explanatory bones to remove in a piece of meat. But hey, that's just Papa's preference. But also Papa's preference usually results in something more flavorful and texturally exciting. Anyway, toss your chicken to coat, make sure it's covered in the marinade, and at this point, you can use it right away, but I recommend letting it sit in the fridge for at least one hour or up to overnight. Next. 
pickles. Not just any pickles. For this sandwich, I'm gonna be using bread and butter, as opposed to dill. It just felt right. Oh, Josh, but they use dill pickles. I don't care. To make your pickles, get yourself two large seedless English cucumbers, slice them into half inch rounds, keep those rounds as even as you can, as usual, toss into a half gallon jar, along with half a sweet onion that's been thinly sliced, give it a little shake and a toss, then to a medium sized pot, add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, three tablespoons of kosher salt, one and a half cups of white distilled vinegar, half a cup of water, one teaspoon of celery seeds, and two tablespoons of mustard seeds. Set them over medium high, and as soon as that sugar dissolves and it comes to a boil, take it off the heat, whisk in one teaspoon of turmeric powder, and then immediately pour that hot liquid over your cukes and onion. Place a medium-sized plastic bag filled with water into your jar to keep everything submerged, and let that sit at room temp until it cools down to, well, room temp. And from there, you'll have lovely bread and butter pickles. Next, mayo. KFC uses just, well, regular mayo. Nothing special, and everyone's giving this an unnecessary amount of clout for it. Why? Instead, we're gonna make a magic mushroom garlic mayo. First, get yourself four to five cloves of garlic, crush them with the flat side of your knife, then begin slicing them very thin, bring that together, and start rough chopping. Look, we're gonna be doing this for a little bit, so get a generous pinch of kosher salt on that that'll help break it all down. Constantly give that a nice rolling chop, occasionally bringing it back together and pressing and smearing with the flat side of your knife, and rinse and repeat until you get a beautiful garlic paste. And before you say anything, don't even think about putting this into a blender or a food processor or anything like that. Do it by hand. This process helps create a very special mellowed and yet forward garlicky flavor. Now from there, add two egg yolks to a medium-sized bowl followed by your garlic paste, one generous tablespoon of Dijon. One tablespoon of water, two tablespoons of lemon juice, a small pinch of salt, and a generous pinch of instantized umami mushroom powder. You can get this stuff at a lot of local Asian markets, and it's literally just mushroom soup powder granules that instantly dissolve. Kind of like mushroom powder mixed with MSG, essentially. It's good, and it's optional. Anyway, whisk all that together until homogenous, then while constantly whisking, slowly stream in one and a quarter cup of vegetable oil, evenly and slowly, keep that pour gentle, and only increase the speed of your pour after it gets a strong emulsion. Once all of your oil has been added, you should be left with a beautifully glossy and creamy thick mayo. Now comes the king to our sandwich, the chicken. Now hold your horses, brother. You think we can make this chicken without a classic 11 herbs and spices? Don't you worry, cowboy papas gotcha. For that, get yourself a large bowl and add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Then in a blender, add one tablespoon of mustard seeds, one tablespoon of black peppercorns, and two teaspoons of celery seeds. Pop on the lid, blend at high speed, and enjoy a nice little almost ghost-like dance from the spices inside until very fine and powder-like. Add that to your flour, and to that, you're gonna add one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of ground ginger, two teaspoons of dried oregano, lightly crushed with your hands, two teaspoons of dried thyme, also crushed with your hands, three tablespoons of ground white pepper, three and a half tablespoons of paprika, one and a quarter tablespoon of MSG, two and a half tablespoons of kosher salt, and bing bang boom, we got 11 herbs and spices, including the salt. Now, whisk all that together until thoroughly combined and you have your flour dredge. Now we're ready to fry the chicken. Get your station set up. Get a pot of oil set to 350 Fahrenheit, then to your flour dredge, drizzle in about two tablespoons of your marinade from your chicken, toss together vigorously to get tiny little balls dispersed through it that'll help generate an extra wispy, flaky, what I like to call crusty. Crusty, a crust that is so crunchy and perfect that any and all desires for another food to be eaten that day are null and void. Now take a piece of chicken, place it in the flour, and coat both sides, aggressively pressing to adhere the flour to the chicken. And again, no blank spots on your chicken. I say it every time and I keep seeing people doing it. Please stop. Once coated, place that on a baking sheet and repeat with the rest of your chicken. Once you're done, depending on the size of your pot, fry two to three pieces of chicken at a time by gently lowering into the oil and letting it fry for four to six minutes or until a beautiful deep golden brown piece of chicken emerges. Place it on a wire rack to cool and repeat with the rest of your little chicken. Chicken man. All right, we're ready to assemble. You know the drill. Slice and always toast your buns beautifully. Then from there, hit the bottom layer with a generous spoonful of your magic mushroom mayo, four big thick coins of bread and butter pickles, and yes, I think planks are better eating-wise, but, you know, we're sticking to nostalgia for this one, so before anyone runs to the comments and whines and whines, you know now. Next, your little prince, aka your boule. Hit the top bun with mayo, and finally, crown your absolute king. Steer at it with great desire and intention, and get ready to go on a ride directly out of the pits of hell, do a flip, and into the great white pearly gates of Flavor Town. Okay, wow, look at that. Visually, Oh, just slid right off. Everyone was like, Josh, you're squishing the sandwich. No, this is legitimately just how they come. Pre-squashed. Oh. All right, I'll give it a little bite. Here we go. What do you want me to say? It's juicy. It's loosey. It's goosey. I think that's where the rhymes stop. Everything about this sandwich is so balanced. It's salty, rich, 
fatty, crunchy, got a little bit of spice in the back. And the sweetness of the bread and butter pickle, instead of using a normal, regular old dill, you get some sweetness in there that helps balance out all that salty richness. The garlic mayo, listen! Do I think we won? What the hell do you think? Now, we need a taste tester. Tell me how you want your sandwich, little man. Number one. Ow. Oh. Mm. All right. Number two. Oh, I went shut the <laughs> Mmm, that's an obvious one. This one's yours by a landslide. This one, it's got that good buttery taste from the buns. You know, the garlic comes through very well. Pickles are better, the buns are better, the chicken melts in your mouth, and this is just dry. I can individually taste spices on this one. Okay, that rounds out today's episode of But Better. I don't know what number it is, but it's a big one because we do a lot of these all the time and you like them so much. You know who the winner is. There's nothing left to say. We've done this before. Every time we go around and around with the chicken sandwiches, we've done the Popeye, we've done the other one. We're back to this. KFC, there's a new colonel in town. You know, people say I look like Colonel Sanders. Did you know that? I feel like that's a bad thing. You want to know what else has a chickeny crunch so deep that it makes our forefathers cry? B-roll. <laughs>